Now, two subjects that I'm really interested in are the arts and Christianity. Why? Because it is our churches that you, as citizens of today, have to go to and demand that churches collect art. If your churches are not collecting art, how is it going to be saved? Do you actually think that there are museums in all these communities as we have churches? No, that's not the case. I always find it amazing how in my work when I started in the 70s as an artist, I was a student at School of the Art Institute. Right there in Chicago, I did not have one African American student at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago to introduce me to the Southside Community Arts Center and to Saba Museum because they were somewhat ashamed. They were ashamed of one of the most important institutions in America today the Southside Community Arts Center, which can barely keep its doors open because the communities are not supporting it. If the churches are not supporting it, the communities are not supporting it. So your legacy, your culture, is tipping. It can easily be dissolved. Now going back to the WPA period, that three years in our country that everyone had an opportunity to make art. You had artisans all over the place, painting, sculpting, writing, dancing. It was a great place in America for three short years. And after three years, all of the art was ordered destroyed. And it was destroyed because President Roosevelt at that time along with meeting with several gallery owners across the country, knew that if those works were allowed onto the open market, in their opinion, it would have destroyed the art market as we know it today. Well, it probably would have been the best thing to have happened. And when the artwork was ordered destroyed, guess whose art was destroyed the most? Any ideas? <laughs> Women. African Americans, their works were ordered destroyed. I myself, along with my partner Richard Wheatman, have collected WPA artwork from Chicago. And these are artists from the 30s, like Mr. Charles White, Mrs. Elizabeth Catlett, Dr. Margaret Burroughs, Mr. Elzir Couture, who was in this part of the country painting, illustrating, the African American. That's what he did. Most of his work is, is a testament to that. So those are the great people that I sought out and wanted to study. Because they were not in the museums in the 70s. In the 70s at the Art Institute of Chicago, <coughs> the only African American artist on the walls was Jacob Lawrence. That was the only work and you talk about a city with a population of well over 40% African American. A city that was founded in part by a Milano, African, Indian, and French Dusabo. One of the largest concentration of African Americans coming up from Mississippi, Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Georgia, even a couple from South Carolina. And you can trace this all over the country. Galleries all over the countries in the 70s were not showing the works of African American artists. And African American artists have been painting for 250 years or longer. Any of you ever heard of Joshua Johnston? Banneke Douglas? 17th, 18th century artists. They were not allowed to paint their images, but they painted landscapes. And they did some of the most incredible portraits of wealthy plantation owners in that day. Women could not paint under their name, but they painted. And they used the male name on their paintings. So what's the difference between then and now? In my opinion, in terms of the arts, 
very little. And that's why I made it almost a mission, if you will, to start having conversations with writers and academicians and historians. Because if you're not writing about us, who's going to write about us? Who's going to write about us? The only magazine which comes out of the 30s, 20s and the 30s, turn of the century, 20s and 30s, was the Crisis Magazine. That's the only magazine that showed images of African American artists painting. Then in the 70s came American Visions, which was sponsored by the Smithsonian. It only lasted about three or four years. Today, we do not have any real record, historical records, of artworks by African American artists, other than a few catalogs by African American artists that universities have produced, and other publishing houses such as Pomegranate, but very, very few. <coughs> when you go into our churches, there are no images other than maybe stained glass windows of artwork depicting the African American culture. So this is a very serious problem. And I feel the only way the problem can be addressed is by going to the future academicians and historians of tomorrow. Because you have an opportunity to get the story right. <laughs>